Hi there, Tor Lacey here. This is a quick lecture about coastlines. Our learning objectives for this unit include being able to explain the cause and motion of ocean surface currents, describe wave motion and wave refraction, be able to identify erosional and depositional coastal landforms and explain how they formed, and distinguish between emergent and submergent coastlines and finally, describe the cause of tides. Our oceans are constantly moving. Along the shore, we see the movement as waves that break roughly perpendicular to the beach. One may also notice movement parallel to the shore called longshore drift. Less obvious, though, are global scale currents of ocean water called gyres. Gyres are very important for transporting heat from the equator towards the poles and for redistributing nutrients throughout the world's oceans. These gyres move clockwise in the northern hemisphere and counterclockwise in the southern hemisphere. This is due to the Coriolis effect, a phenomenon which causes fluids like ocean water and air to be deflected to the right or deflected to the left in the northern and southern hemispheres, respectively. Currents control climate. Water takes longer to heat up and cool down than does land. So ocean currents leaving the poles or the equator can travel great distances without a significant change in temperature. These cool or warm currents in turn can play a role in controlling the climate on the continents. For example, Arica, Chile, has noticeably cooler temperatures over the course of a year than does Rio de Janeiro in Brazil. This is because of the cooler versus warmer ocean currents off their respective coasts. We see the warm current coming from the equator, causing the climate in Rio de Janeiro to be warmer than the climate of Arica, which is controlled by the cool water coming up from Antarctica. The coast isn't precisely where land and water meet, but instead includes a wide zone representing the transition from land to sea. We call this the coastal zone, and in this illustration here, we have many important vocabulary terms that describe the breakdown of the different parts of the coastal zone. You'll need to become familiar with these terms in order to complete lecture and lab assignments in this module. Waves approaching the shore. Waves are simply the physical expression of energy moving through water. The source of this energy is wind, which blowing across the water far offshore for a long enough period of time will generate groups of waves. A wave passing through water will cause the water to move in a circular path, not only at the surface, but down to a depth of about half a wavelength. A wavelength being the distance from the peak of one wave to the peak of another. As a wave approaches the shore, they sense the bottom when they reach a depth that is about half their wavelength. As the wave interacts with the bottom, it slows it down due to friction. As it slows, it grows in height, eventually becoming too steep to hold itself up, and it breaks forward, making the crashing waves that we see along a beach. Along the shore, the energy from crashing waves is transferred to the land in the form of erosion. This happens directly from the force of water striking bedrock or sediment, but more importantly, because the breaking waves contain sand and pebbles, which are hurled against the shoreline, doing tremendous abrasion. The photographs from your textbook here show us the result of that abrasion. On the left, we have the rounding of boulders and pebbles, very common along shorelines. And then we have the undercutting of the cliff here, again, due to the fact that the water crashing at the base of the cliff is doing abrasion to that rock. Wave refraction helps to concentrate erosion along a shoreline. As waves approach, they slow where they first encounter shallow water. Remember, this is at a depth of half their wavelength, while the rest of the wave continues to travel at its original speed. The result is a wave that wraps around land protrusions called headlands, and erosion is concentrated along the sides of these landforms. Refraction also produces excellent surfing waves, as we have here in the photograph of Rincon Point, about an hour and a half north of Los Angeles. 
Wave erosion will be most pronounced along the beach. Over hundreds to thousands of years, wave erosion acting over the low and high tide range of the beach will erode an almost perfectly flat surface called a wave cut platform. Wave cut platforms can become elevated above sea level along active continental margins due to tectonic uplift. These elevated platforms are called marine terraces and are useful indicators of episodes of past tectonic uplift. This is a cartoon drawing of erosional coastal landforms including the wave cut platform, marine terrace, and the cliff connecting the two. This photograph here is from Palos Verdes here in Southern California and this shows us three marine terraces, this being the most recent and this being the oldest here. Erosion since being uplifted has rounded them somewhat, but you still see a very flat surface representing the ancient wave cut platform. Another photograph from the Palos Verdes area. Here we have the active wave cut platform and the most recent marine terrace. Evolving shore. Over time, deposition will replace erosion as the dominant landscape shaping process. Sand is, of course, deposited on the beach, but it can also be shaped into unique landforms like tombolos, spits, and baymouth bars. Tombolos are deposits of sand that connect the mainland to sea stacks. Nice photograph of one here. That's the sea stack, that's the mainland, and there's the tombolo there. Spits are deposits of sand that extend from land out into the sea to create a peninsula. Baymouth Bar is quite similar, but different in that they cut off a bay from the ocean. Ocean tides are the rising and lowering of sea level twice per day. The reason for this phenomenon is gravity. More specifically, the gravitational attraction between the moon and Earth's oceans causes the oceans to bulge out towards the moon. This causes a temporary rising of the sea level, called high tide. It's temporary because Earth is spinning on its axis, the, so the bulge will be spun away from the moon and its gravity, resulting in a lowering of sea level. This is referred to as low tide, and happens a quarter of a turn away from the moon. At a half turn, or 12 hours later, Earth rotates through the other half of the bulge, and we have a second high tide. Then low tide, once again at three quarters of a turn, or rotation of the Earth, before finishing out one day. That's the end of this brief discussion about the coasts. I hope you enjoyed it, and thank you for listening.